Psalms chapter 27, verse 7 to 8. Quickly. So much to do. I trust God for speed. Psalms chapter 27, verse 7 and 8. What I have on the screen is Psalm 5. What's happening? Okay. So I can use my Bible. This is the psalmist. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. When thou saidst, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face will I seek. Give me back the seventh verse. We want to join you a little in this psalm. Um, the attempt is to lay a foundation for the quest for God. My subject is the seeker and his quest for God. And progressively under this aspect of my labors in growth, I have tried to build the consciousness that our pursuit of God, even though it appears to be congregational, is designed to become true when it becomes personal. For in that day, no man will say, let us go after the Lord. It doesn't mean that we'll stop encouraging ourselves. It means that everyone will have found a reason in themselves to go after the Lord. We will all be aware that there is a void that God has factored into our existence. A void that a human relationship, a void that possessions, a void that human attainment, a void that the, the, the applause of men cannot feel if God is not in that space then nothing can take his space and because we desire that that space be filled we begin to express as pilgrims on a journey to find God like those who go on um, expeditions will do you pack a back sack you put a knife you put you put enough water, you put food, you put grains, all kinds of things, just to make sure that you survive because you are not, you do, the journey may, the distance may be known. But because you found out that in scriptures, in journeying into realities or personalities, the distance is not measured in lengths, it's measured in weights. So that when the angel came to Elijah, the admonition was it again and it was not because the journey was too long it was possible to measure his current location in reference to Horeb the mountain of God the admonition was to eat again because the journey is too great for thee your capacity in the spirit has been measured and outside this meal you will not have what it takes to achieve what God is summoning you to. Well, you may want to bring that same admonition to your neighbor. Say to them, please eat again. The concept of food in scriptures is not for pleasure. So I know that you can wake up tomorrow and your desire is to eat shawarma and then you go and eat shawarma. It's not, shawarma is not the meal of somebody who is hungry. It's somebody who feels that he has achieved something and wants to spoil himself. Or somebody wants to impress another. Am I? The other meals name withheld on the grounds of honor. That um, find more appropriateness within the context of hunger. Because what those meals deliver is not a pleasurable feeling. What they deliver is strength. So according to scriptures, food is for strength. 
It means every time you discern that you are insufficient in capacity, one of the things that you are admonished in scriptures to do is to eat again. On the strength of that understanding, can you tell your neighbor, eat again? Mm. It may be the same verse of scripture, but sit with it again. It may be the same prayer point, but stay, stay there, stay there, pray it again. It may be the same reality. What God advertised the last time he came was power. What he advertised the last time was glory. But you need a second encounter. It may be the same stream, but you need a second encounter. Because everyone that you have gives you a gradient in the spirit. And when God finds out that you have not ascended into what is meat for what he's sending you to do, he invites you to the same point and says to you, eat again. Eat again. A personal labor. What you find, the reason why I went to that, and I'm going to be very petty, the reason why I went to that was because the prayers that I'm about to read out to you and bring some counsel on is not a congregational prayer. You will not cover much distance, and I come by the witness of the Spirit to tell you this. If the robustness of your prayers is more felt in congregational fashion than in personalized fashion. That you cannot weep on your private altar. You only weep when we are together. You cannot stay before God privately. Your strength in prayer is public. Maybe you are even one of those who have resigned your faith and you claim that you were not given the gift of prayer. It means that your life is measured into the natural. You will not be able to do much supernaturally. Because you see, prayer is how we breathe in the spirit. So Jesus said that um, he spoke a parable in Luke 18 1, and it was to teach that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Like you admonish to breathe, no matter what happens to you. You may have pains, but stay breathing. In the same way, we sustain prayers. So that even outside your prayer time, Father, thank you. A few lines in tongues here and there. A few lines in understanding here and there. A few petitions flying to God. A few words in supplication. Trying to seek the help of him that is greater than you. That's how we survive. When you stop praying, you start dying. There is no miracle around it. So when people say, sir, I'm struggling to pray. The antidote to the struggle to pray is prayer. I still told someone yesterday. I said, start talking. Everything you said to me now. It was a long ride. Everything you said now, take your same message and read them to the Holy Ghost. That's how prayer starts. I'll share with my wife. I found out one of the secrets to administering spiritual reality. Have you prayed for people who were sick before and they got healed? One of the ways to pray for more is that your heart needs to enter the prayer. I found out that one of the vehicles that moves healing potency from your spirit into your hands is that you are concentrated. Sometimes it takes 30 minutes to be concentrated. Stay there. Somebody comes with a problem. You are trying to pray. You say, God, solve it in Jesus' name. It works like that sometimes. Sometimes you need to labor into what is wrong. And what, what unveils what is wrong is that you stay in the prayer. So sometimes I meet people and I hold their hands. I'm praying for long. I'm praying. I'm praying. I journey with my current level of revelation and I found out that after a few minutes, because I was intent on unraveling what was wrong, the gift of the word of knowledge begins to flow and it begin, becomes a stream. In the school of spiritual reality, time is an important index. You don't know what is inside you if you have not given it time. Are you with me? Okay. Last week I came, I told you to stay with the teacher. Now I'm saying that in prayer. That problem at home, I know the way you have been praying it. Lord, handle that problem in Jesus' name. That's not the design. Because God is not just about answering the prayers. He also wants to bring you into certain reality. 
when you stay long you will find out that there are possibilities in god that are stronger than answers to prayers he also rewards people for praying and well, those who are in the school of prayer will we learn that that there are feedbacks in prayer an answer is just one of them there are also rewards and they are stronger than answers so that when you look at your life when you have gray ears you find out that there are, maybe there are 50 things that define your life and when you go back and take your prayer notes you find out that out of the 50 things that define you now there were only 10 of them that featured on your prayer notes because the rewards of prayer are supposed to be more than the answers of prayer this my wife is not an answer to prayer she's a reward to prayer finer than what an answer will have delivered and what i merchandise with this woman is not fine you know we live together in the same house may god give you understanding the world has not seen half of god's store in her and only a reward could have brought that because i could not have fully captured what God has placed in that verse. Can you whisper, stay long? No, you are not whispering. It's me you are looking at. I'm like you now. Let me come down. See, see I shake my hand. There's nothing mystical. I'm like you. Stay long. What I'm also merchandising is staying long. Mercy that came by staying long. The psalmist began to advertise his utterances in prayer. And the first thing he said to the Lord was, Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Four things I wrote out of here. I said the psalmist, David, was introduced with a cry. Even that, Hear, O Lord, is a cry. But what he was releasing was a petition. I will call out to you. But I want to secure your commitment. Let me read to you what I wrote. His petition was an attempt to align his activity, his cry, with divine profitability. David knew that it was not every man that cried that was heard. We just demonstrated something now. That abortion that happened in the pen landing in my hand can happen to prayers too so when i say hear oh lord when i cry with my voice what i'm saying is lord whatever you know how to do do to align my prayer with prophets in you make sure that the cry that escapes my mortal lips travels as far as you just here it may mean that you will come close to me uh, Baba, this is your chair here. So come and sit down here. Yeah. It may mean that you will come close to me so that you can hear my cry. It may be that you will bring me to you. It may be that you will occasion some kind of mercy or there will be some kind of help that will come to you. But don't let these prayers end in the human dimension. Let it journey as far as you and let it come with prophets. We need to study how people pray. Or how people prayed in scriptures because our lives after a while will bear witness to the shape of our prayers hear oh lord when i cry with my voice have mercy so that was the first part now the second part of that verse he advertises his, the expectation that he has for his prayer activity have mercy also upon me and answer me so if you were present where the psalmist was praying you will see first an attempt to align himself with profitability in god the second thing you will see is is uh, or see are his expectations as regards the realities that his prayers will produce two things is that the prayer will occasion mercy and that the prayer will secure an answer from God. We need to ask you, when you pray, what do you expect at the end of prayer? If you do not have a focus for your engagement of God 
you your engagements will be void of reality surely there shall be an end and your expectation shall not be cut short what do we uphold at the end of your engagement if there's no expectation i know that my christ can fall short we are not heard because we have the right words good english is not an advantage when you are praying to god bad english is neither a disadvantage are you with me whether your english is good or bad they can fall short there is a commitment on the side of god that aids your cry into his ears and i want to say that to us today so that even in tongues whether your tongues are monosyllabic ah ah ba ba ta ta or you speak in tongues for five hours and you don't repeat any line what makes your prayers heard is that there is a help that the spirit supplies and you must consciously align yourself with that help hear my cry when i call when you have aligned yourself there is a second layer of that protocol and it is that you approach with expectation what expectation helps you to do is to measure the, your profiting with god i shared something in lagos when we we're teaching on the revival one of the things and i shared to my page yesterday one of the things that have that have built successfully a barrier between us and the revival so that we're asking god for one prayer point for 15 20 years is that the definitions of our definitions of a revival are not on the same line with god's definitions if i ask i give out a questionnaire and said what's in the revival some people think that becoming more popular is the subject of a revival will have more money i will be known i will be known meanwhile the revival agenda is built into the consciousness that life is absent so how we begin our journey into a revival is that we arrive at a plane where we acknowledge that a diminishing has happened to the realities of god and that the state of, our, of we who are praying and our generation is deadness if we align our expectations accurately when god begins to come we'll be able to judge his coming are you with me but if there are no expectations if our cry for the revival is a mindless one what it means is that even when god comes our cries will be sustained beyond his appearance have mercy also upon me and answer me next verse there are two other things i want to show you i mustn't miss anything okay so on the second aspect of the verse 7 i have this to say that verse 7 is a template or a wisdom template for the one who is positioned as a seeker in god it's a wisdom template don't trust in your prayer ability let the trust that produces the confidence that i will profit in prayer being god our prayer needs help to be heard are you with me when we're small they'll tell us if we don't do something in prayer that our prayers will not go beyond the roof i don't know if prayers have obstructions with natural roofs but the lives of many advertise that their prayers are not heard <laughs> 